Hi guys, it has been a minute. I feel like I always say this when I find myself going back to YouTube. I literally am terrible with YouTube. I, there's really no excuse. There's no. I'm really bad at editing and the whole idea of recording is just daunting to me. But I felt like we could do a little bit of a get ready together and I can show you guys what I'm doing for my simple everyday makeup and what I do with my hair. Cause right now it's just been washed and nothing else is going on with it. I don't have any in the bangs. My bangs look crazy. <laughs> so I thought when I get started and have a little chit chat session with it. So grab a drink some coffee, an energy drink, water, whatever, and uh, let's talk. So first, before I start my makeup, I just spritz my hair and basically just get it ready for putting heat on it. Um, I get my bangs too. A lot of people have asked me, well, how do you keep your hair so healthy when you've you know, bleached it and colored it so many times? This baby right here. Uh, not sponsored, <laughs> just... Uh, <laughs> I love it. While my hair does whatever it needs to do, <laughs> we will tackle my makeup. So I wonder if I have enough. <laughs> I have been using these now for the past maybe eight months. It lasts for multiple days. You can take a shower with them, go in the water with them, you can work out with them. Like I can pull them and they don't come right off instantly and they look way more natural than like the regular little strips so let's get into it uh, update you guys about my life a little bit my life has been interesting the last few months i have experienced quite a significant amount of loss and death uh my kitten frosty he was killed in a hit and run by a reckless driver. Shortly after that, um, a friend of mine who we grew up together, we had known each other for over 20 years, was killed instantly in a motorcycle accident. And there have been a few very close people in my life that have received some terminal diagnoses and it's been a lot, you know, I think that I can sit here and act like everything's fine and everything's dandy when in actuality it's not. Like, I am really struggling. I'm struggling with my sobriety. I am struggling with my mental health. I've noticed that a lot of my friendships, a lot of my relationships have been suffering. And, uh... Yeah, so let's talk about it. All right, sorry, I had to shift my camera a little bit and put you guys on like an actual tripod. Besides my, besides the loss that I've been experiencing and that doesn't also take into consideration, there has been many deaths in our shelter. Uh, as many of you guys know, I volunteer at a rescue here in Rochester called Headed for Forever. Also, you take one individual lash and you go Wow, look at my close-up underneath the lash line. I start all the way in the back, press up, press down, and you've got one on there already. Again, I like my lashes a little bit longer. I've said this before, like on social media, that you can start with any number. It goes from 16 all the way to 9. I've also noticed that a lot of my anger and frustration, look at, I'm literally picking my thumb, I'm so anxious even talking about it. <laughs> um, a lot of my anxious and frustration from, and my anger from my divorce has now turned into sadness, it's a significant amount of sadness. I think like in the beginning, it is such a raw emotion and you're angry at the situation and you're angry at the person and it's it's easier to be angry at someone than it is to be sad 
you know, like there is so much more adrenaline and anger than there is in sadness. And I think over the past couple months, I have really shifted my perspective of my divorce into like, it's okay to grieve the loss of what I thought I had and it's okay to miss her. It's okay to miss what we had as a couple because honestly what we had was really good. That is something that I never want to forget about. She did so many wonderful things for me, truly. Uh, she was a wonderful partner in many ways and I think unfortunately we were so online and we were so public with our relationship that when we decided to do what was best for ourselves and to separate there was a lot of outside noise and a lot of other people's opinions that were uh how do i there were a lot of other people's opinions that counteracted how her and i would normally respond if it was just her and i the outside influence of people is astounding it it, it really shifts how people move forward it does um and you know it's always the saying of well don't listen to anybody don't listen to anybody it's really hard uh i'll be the first to say it's really hard i think like we and so we ended on very good terms not very good terms we ended cordially and civilly and i think you know when lawyers got involved and legal representation was brought into the picture that made things extremely messy because that's what it does my parents went through a horrendous separation and there is nothing good about bringing lawyers into a picture there it nothing good nothing ever good comes from adding lawyers uh but like i said there was a lot of outside noise and a lot of influence and it's hard to go up against that and then we add social media on top of it and I'll be the first to say that I am guilty of kind of running to social media. I am. I take accountability for that. I don't think I necessarily handled the situation as good as I could have. Again, no one prepares you on how to handle a public divorce online for almost 4 million people. You know, who have loved you and supported you for four years. I... I think I did the very best that I could, but there were definitely a lot of mistakes that I made along the way that not only hurt her, but hurt myself. And obviously we can't ignore what that did to Emily. So I think like I'm at a point now in the separation where I'm really starting to reflect on who I am as a person who I want to be as a person and who I want as a partner moving forward. She gave me so many wonderful things and a lot of people ask me, well, do you regret getting married? And my answer will always be no to that. I don't regret any of the love that I gave because she deserved it and she needed it and vice versa. I will never regret that. I'll never regret being in that relationship in that marriage. It taught me so much and it gave me so much so no there's no regrets um and it really showed me and i know i can't speak for her but i know it showed her it showed us what we deserve and it, it it's not necessarily each other and that's okay i think something that i'm also really guilty of and this has just been like so much self-reflection over the past few months i'm very guilty of running from person to person. I have such severe abandonment uh, and that extends from my childhood up until my adulthood. I am so fearful. You know, I went from a very long-term relationship with a man for almost five years. I had a six month period of a break. I went right to my ex-wife and that was four years. So I have not been alone for nearly nine years. That's a problem. That is a significant problem. I know that I am a lover girl at heart. I love love. I love long 
term committed relationships because they make me feel safe they make me feel secure and even though the relationship doesn't necessarily promise safety and security I stay in them because I thrive on consistency and routine and I thrive on secure safe relationships I don't do well with abrupt leaving and the wishing and the washing between well are we this are we that are we this are we that I don't do well with that I, I I just don't and that's probably a product of my childhood or a product of my past but when I look for a partner I look for someone who can provide me consistency and routine and that extends into being in long-term relationships however I have neglected the most important relationship of all and that is the relationship with myself I have not been in a long-term relationship with myself ever period never well in 10 years almost 10 years and I am really guilty of that I deserve every single thing that I want we all do you know I've read this quote said the second that you start questioning if you deserve more you do and that hit me like a freaking rock to the head because you should never have to question if you are getting what you deserve you should simply be getting it I'm incredibly guilty of giving 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 and to, to the point where it is unhealthy and I burn myself out I, I extend myself to the point where there is nothing left of me and I've done that my whole life and that is just disastrous because it doesn't have it that that is not a foundation for long relationships it is a foundation for a lot of turmoil in relationships because it leads to resentment and anger and this mindset of well i did this for you why can't you do that for me that's a really dangerous game to play and it has ruined many relationships of mine and having these you know formed expectations of people is really unfair lots of reflection <laughs> lots of things have been transpiring but those were a couple pieces that i really have taken away so far in my divorce i think oftentimes and not to be cliche or whatever but i think oftentimes we forget that this is her one and only shot here and i left a very tumultuous marriage relationship because i deserved better and also this is what i'm using for a little primer <laughs> um but it took me a really long time to put my foot down and to finally say this is unacceptable i deserve better i i don't deserve this i don't deserve to live my life like this anymore and i have noticed that it takes me a really long time to get to that point when it shouldn't when it really just shouldn't and i think that's another lesson like upon the other lessons that i've taken away i've also learned that the quote unquote right person this you know whatever will love every single piece of me they will love the fact that i have 10 fucking cats <laughs> yes i have 10 cats they will love the fact that on a random tuesday afternoon i'll bring home a kitten that i found on the side of the road and nurse it back to health they will love the fact that i will have emily living with me all the time if not majority of the time they will love the fact that i don't drink they will love the fact that I'm ambitious and I'm extremely sensitive and I'm very empathetic and I feel things very heavily. They will love all those things and they will be there for me when I need consistency and when I need routine. And it won't be a, oh, here you go again, you're asking for this. And it won't make me feel like I'm asking for the world in return. Lots of lessons and lots of things I've taken away. All right, next we're gonna add a little bit of my favorite foundation. It is the Tarte Shape Tape. And then this is what I use for to blend, to brush, whatever you wanna call it. So that's a little bit about the current situation. Another current situation is, I think many of you guys know that I bought a house with my ex-wife and that house recently sold 
and I have been living back in my childhood home, which that is a story for another day, really. However, I'm extremely thankful to be here and I am incredibly thankful to have a space to be welcomed in with all of my animals because there is no apartment, there is no place that I could rent right now that would welcome all of my animals. So I'm very thankful. Starting over is really daunting. And I am in the process of trying to buy a house, but if anyone who uh, is also in the process of buying a house, then you know how horrifically expensive and competitive the market is, and that hasn't changed. Doing everything on my own is a bit daunting. Uh, not a bit, a lot, actually. It's scary. It is very scary. But, again, it's something that I think I need. It's something that I know I need to do and I need to accomplish by myself. Another really good positive thing is that I can stay in New York. I can stay in Rochester. That is always a compromise when you get into relationships, especially when you are in a relationship with someone who is long distance and that's all I've ever done. I've only ever done long distance relationships and it's always a compromise. And that is one thing that I am very firm with on my boundaries is that I won't leave here. I don't, I don't want to leave here. This little bit of a concealer. I love it here for so long. And I think this is kind of a universal experience when we're young. We're just like, Oh, I can't wait to get, the hell out of my hometown like I I just hate it here and I have had the privilege to travel a lot of different places around the world and every single time I come back home this is home this is the place I want to live it's also where Emily is comfortable it's also where all my people are all my friends are for the for the for the most part and I shouldn't have to leave if I don't want to and again, the right person will accept that open-heartedly and be more than willing to have that work. And that's okay that, you know, I haven't, I haven't found that. I didn't find that quite yet. That's okay. That's that little bit of an update. I use the Anastasia dark brown powder. Oh, here is my... Blind and deaf girly. Hi, you want to say hi? Oh, she fell over. She has a uh, CH, so she's a wobbly girly. Whoa. <laughs> say hi, Boo Boo Bell. Whoa. There's that. All right, we are finishing up with my everyday basic makeup. This has taken me longer because I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> but this is my everyday routine pretty much not every day most days i don't wear any makeup actually that's 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 the truth i don't wear anything on my face i don't wear any foundation i literally just put on freaking eyelashes if they you know if one comes off a little bit of bronzer on just because it always makes me feel a little bit more powerful belly is just in the corner staring at me <laughs> or staring at something so i just use again tart been well loved very well loved top it off with some lip oil before I put like a little bit of gloss or like lip gloss on normally I don't do that this is what I will do all right now let's move on to my hair what do I use to get my hair the way that I get it I use the Dyson knockoff. It's called Shark Beauty. And it, this actually was a brand deal, full transparency, but I use it every single day. I'm not sponsored. This is not sponsored. None of this is sponsored right now. I'm really obsessed with it. It Ever since I got my bangs, there has not been a single hair tool that works better. So, show you guys what I do. It comes with different attachments. So it came with this attachment and it came with, came with the two other curlers and I'll show you guys those. And it also came with a blow dryer attachment and it literally like, it's just so cool. Like it's really, really cool. Um, all right, so put her on. I do like number two for the power of the blowing. And then for my bangs, I either do one feet or two feet. 
So we'll do one for right now. But there's also an option for none. So what I do, it's so dirty, sorry. I take the bangs. This is to get that like wispy, flowy look for the bangs. Um, so they're not like plastered to your forehead. <laughs> so very simple. Roll. Okay, it looks crazy. All right, now we will get to the hair. So I don't section my hair properly. Never have. Never will. <laughs> I just kind of go where my part is, go down the middle, and take this. Just put that over there. And then I do a little bit of this. I just section it into like two or three. We'll do three parts. And I just twist it up, stick her over, use a clip. Wow, amazing work. <laughs> and then we will switch attachments. So the Shark Beauty comes with two different kinds, a right and a left. So we'll do the left side of my hair first. So we attach. And then again, choose the setting. This took me a minute to understand how to do, but it's very similar to the dead side. Take a section of your hair, it will wrap it, and you just pull up. Okay, and this is what it looks like. And then I'll brush it through a little bit, but sometimes I just love like the fullness of it. And then now we'll do the other side. So we unclip this and take the other attachment and do the same thing. again because it has I'll show you guys sparkles all right we've got the final uh final look I have been adding extensions lately to my hair uh just to give my hair a little damage my hair pretty bad so I've been limiting the use of them Melly wants to say hi but yeah this was awesome and I loved it and thank you guys for watching with me chatting with me little tea time and I will link all the products that I use there wasn't that many but you know I'll link them all and let me know what you guys want to see more of I know I always ask this and then I never get to it but <laughs> Truly, if there's anything in particular that you really want to see, please let me know and I will try and get to it. I am 
making myself an early resolution this year to <laughs> create more video content. So, all right. Love you guys. Melly says he loves you too. Mwah.